Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and another video. When it comes to rolling Linux distributions, Arch is probably the most famous and perhaps infamous in terms of how challenging it can be to install using the Arch way, although the Arch install script can make things a bit easier. Then there's OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, a distribution that has its roots in SUSE Linux back in the 90s, well known for its excellent printed documentation. Today, my goal is to run through a customized installation of Tumbleweed, set up for creating demonstration videos such as this one. We will also configure a real network printer as well as a basic install of the Linux KVM hypervisor and libvirt tools. Let's get started right after this. To help speed things up, I've already downloaded the DVD ISO instead of the network install ISO, which I recommend you try instead to make sure you get the latest packages right out of the gate. Let's boot it up now. Here we go into Boot Manager and we'll select the DVD ISO. As you can see, the ISO for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed has a bunch of utility options for booting can come in handy in the future. It's good to know it's there. Pretty self-explanatory. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, choose installation. So it loads the kernel. And uh, next it's loading, obviously, the basic drivers and does a hardware detection. There we go, initializing network configuration. And we've got a big license agreement that we'll scroll through and pretend to read and also pretend to accept by clicking next. This is a quick system probe. Activate online repositories now, yes. Okay, main update repository is selected main repository for open source software is selected and the main repository for non open source software is also selected. Those are the defaults. Sources and debug we'll just ignore. This is just fine. We'll click next. Let it uh, add the repositories we selected. Initialize the installation. Okay. So we're going to go with desktop with KDE Plasma today and just strip out what we don't need. We can also start with generic desktop and build up from scratch, uh, customize, but I found it's quicker and more reliable just to uh, start with KDE Plasma and take out what we don't need. And I'll demonstrate that shortly. First of all, we've got suggested partitioning. And the suggested is that we partition for swap, dev VDA3. One and two are for EFI and the root uh, partition uh, respectively. I'm not going to use a separate swap partition for my devices because I don't really need to uh, suspend to, uh, uh, to disk. And I to prefer to use uh, ZRAM swap for performance, uh, swap to compressed RAM. So let's go, after we've disabled the uh, swap partition, let's go to Expert Partitioner. You can take a look, we're just left with two partitions, VDA1, which is the EFI partition, and the rest of the disk is dev VDA2, which is the ButterFS root partition. And you can see it lists all the uh, subvolumes prepended with an at sign. Uh, for example, uh, you can add additional subvolumes if you need. You can also enable copy and write or disable copy and write, depending on what you store on that uh, subvolume. For example, uh, the home subvolume, where home directories are stored, has uh, copy and write enabled. No copy and write disabled because we want to be able to create snapshots uh, for a home directory. VAR is where our kernel virtual machine hypervisor files live and images, and we want to turn off copy on write there with no copy on write uh, because we're not snapshotting uh, the uh, 
libvirt uh, handles that itself and it's it's already a copyright system so we're good with our partitioning just a two uh, partitions vda1 vda2 so we'll click next and we're going with uh, synchronizing with a network time protocol uh, location finding doesn't work automatically with OpenSUSE so I'm selecting uh, US Pacific Los Angeles as my time zone creating quickly a uh, user account with a password we'll use the same password for the root account or system administrator account we'll disable automatic login we'll go ahead and click next it's that simple all right OpenSUSE has installation settings page where you can configure a whole bunch of things before you install. It's very powerful, one of the most powerful uh, installers I think that I've encountered so far. We'll click uh, Next and Details uh, for uh, stripping out things we don't need. So for the KDE Applications pattern, I'd like to remove the Games pattern, the uh, personal information manager pattern and also the office pattern uh, which contains LibreOffice because we'll use the Flatpak instead. Uh, we want to keep this uh, machine as uh, streamlined as possible for creating YouTube videos such as this one, right? That's our purpose today. We'll enable KVM virtualization host which already contains Vert Manager and other useful utilities and packages um yes so in addition to that we'll also want to uh install distrobox which is a fantastic front end to podman and docker we'll use podman here we'll also install linus uh, the security and system auditing tool we'll run it to check for uh, system hardening post installation podman as the backend for distrobox it's a daemonless container engine for managing containers pods and images as you can read and next uh, we also because we're swapping to zram compressed ram we want to install the systemd zram service package and that looks like that's it for today with packages so we can do a ZRAM swap on and swap off. So a great option to uh, swap to RAM. So we've got a bunch of packages that will be modified here. The selection rather. Good. So, um, so we end up for the software. We've got uh, KVM virtualization host and tools and it automatically installed the KVM host server which is the uh, type 1 hypervisor for Linux kernel based for network settings I'm just gonna uh, go in here and change the static host name to OSTW1 open source tumbleweed 1 and we'll go ahead and make sure those settings are confirmed everything looks good we so we can install there's a whole bunch of other things you can do here at, on this page. Uh, I won't go into that today, but uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is very powerful with its installer. So we're installing over 2,100 packages. Many of those are on the DVD ISO to speed things up. As mentioned earlier, um, I'm heavily editing this video so you guys don't get bored. As, uh, even with a DVD ISO, it takes a while to install OpenSUSE Tumbleweed with all those packages. But storage is cheap, right? We were looking for a machine that runs reliably and uh, with all the functionality that we need. So it installs the boot manager, etc., etc. So it's done. Uh, system re will reboot now. I'll go ahead and do that okay so for the standard options for the boot uh, grub we've got uh, an option to boot a read-only snapshot post install read-only snapshot so we can always roll back to the system back to that if something goes wrong with our next steps 
I'll demonstrate how to roll back the system in a moment. First, we'll select the Plasma Wayland session. I'm going to enter my password. Here we go. Ahoy, this is OpenSUSE. I will uncheck Show on Next Startup. You guys can read the documentation. Documentation is rather good for um, on OpenSUSE. Not quite as good as the ArchWiki, but very, very good indeed. If I click on About this system in System Settings, you can see you're running 5.27.10, which is the latest LTS version uh, of Plasma as of the publication date of this video. Let me make some quick changes for my accessibility. For my eyes, I prefer strongly prefer uh, a dark theme. So breeze dark it is. Also under screen locking, I like to turn off the auto screen lock because we're demonstrating OpenSUSE today. You don't want it to lock on us while I'm talking at you. For window behavior, instead of click to focus, I like focus follows mouse. I'll click apply. Uh, next, we'll choose KDE Wallet. I prefer to disable the KDE Wallet subsystem. Click apply on that. I've got my own programs for managing passwords, etc. Can come in handy if you like it, but uh, it's a lot of overhead we don't need for today. Display configuration. Uh, let's switch to the proper 1080p. And I'd like the scale to be 120%. We'll keep those settings. And uh, finally, I'm going to click on power management. I'm going to do uncheck screen energy savings so it doesn't blank. Today, it's going to be like a desktop where we create videos or YouTube. All right, just to make sure everything is taken, you can also log out and log back in again. But this virtual machine is uh, very fast and uh, rebooting is not an issue time-wise. So we still have our uh, read-only snapshot fresh post install in case something goes wrong. Again, we can roll back to it. Let's boot up our freshly configured system. I'm going to enter the password again. In SDDM. And here we go. That looks a lot crisper and uh, more readable, hopefully for you as well. All right, uh, since this is a KVM host, it set up a bridge, and I believe the uh, bridge interface uh, messes with Discover. You can see uh, it's a common error. Uh, unable to load applications, please verify internet connectivity. I know inter my internet's fine. To fix this quickly, since I'm using Discover for FlatHub only, I'm just going to make FlatHub the default source. And then if I switch back to the home, you can see we've got uh, it nicely populated with most popular and editor's choice apps. So LibreOffice, as mentioned earlier, I prefer to use the Flatpak version of LibreOffice I like to use as much flat pack as possible. Uh, immutable distributions have given me this habit and I really appreciate it because I can transfer the configuration files for all my plat flat packs from distribution to distribution, machine to machine without any changes. It's one of the powers of flat packs. It works exactly the same regardless of which distribution you're running. All right, since the, the flat packs are installed system wide, I have to enter my root password. Let it install. There, on the top right, you got remove launch, which means hopefully it is indeed installed, LibreOffice that is. So we go to the Office subsection and drag the uh, launcher for LibreOffice to the uh, uh, taskbar and launch it to test if everything's working okay. KDE tends to be chatty chatty with all these pop-ups. I prefer disabling pop-ups as I go along. I don't need that. People used to Windows uh, might prefer or uh, prefer uh, KDE to be uh, talking at them constantly with their updates. Anyway, we're running the flat pack successfully, so we're good with LibreOffice. Next, I'd like to install the KDE and Live nonlinear video editor. 
which I, I'm using right now to edit this video you're watching. I'm using the Flatpak version, of course, so we'll install it. And we'll see, now it's installed. Now um, remove launch icons from there. Let's go to multimedia, select Kadian Live and drag it to the uh, launch bar or taskbar make sure it launches here we go KD in live in all its glory as you can see we're running the uh, 2023 version dot oh eight dot four yeah about KDE this, this is a KDE app right let's quit and finally, I'd like to install a recording software, and I use OBS Studio, exactly like this video. So you can do live streaming or video recording. You record Windows, re record your entire desktop. It's Wayland compatible. It works fantastic. Fantastic pieces of software here, all available for free. Good, it's installed. Let's go back to multimedia here and drag the OBS Studio launcher to the uh, to the bar, launch it. Ah, it wants to do the auto configuration for a fresh install. That looks pretty good. OBS 30.0.2. It's ready to go. Again, all this software, the Flatpak versions I'm using right now to edit and render this video. Okay, we want also the console. I like to have my console available in one click. So I'm just going to add it to kind of like favorites here. So let's launch console. Let's make the font size bigger and make uh, check the uh, uh, RAM usage, make it full size. As you can see, we've got no swap, right? We have no swap partition but we have the uh, ZRAM swap uh, system package enabled. So to do that, let me do a, po a point and click as much as possible with this video today. I'm going to go into YAST, enter the root password, which is the same as the user password, my password. I'm gonna go uh, in the YAST control center to the services manager, let it initialize. It's going to give us a list of services, hopefully, that are alphabetically sorted. So it starts with accounts daemon, and we're looking for ZRAM. ZRAM swap is at the very bottom. So it's set to manually start, and it's, of course, inactive because we haven't started it yet. So let's start it now, and then make the start mode not manually, but on boot. So every time I start this machine, I get a swap uh, to compressed RAM configured and enabled. So ZRAM swap will be started and it's configured to start after booting ZRAM swap. Apply all changes, yes please. And let's reread the status in the uh, services list. As you can see, ZRAM swap now is configured to boot on start uh, or start on boot rather, and it's active state. And if you show the detail, it exited successfully, right? So service enabling compressing RAM with ZRAM. So it sets up the swap space version one, size is 7.7 .7 gigs. And uh, the process exited with code zero, which means success. Very good. So, all right, let's go back to the console and let's check to make sure they've got swap enabled. And sure enough, we do. The aforementioned 7.7 .7 gigs, which matches the uh, RAM size, is uh, available to us for swapping, or available to the kernel rather. And the Linux kernel in general is engineered to expect swap so that the out of memory daemon doesn't randomly kill our processes. So Snapper shows the following snapshots, including uh, snapshots three and four, which is pre and post. 
pair of snapshots for the YAS Services Manager configuration change. Comes in very handy if you want to undo any configuration changes. Uh, we just undo snapshots three and four, which I handle in other videos. I won't, I'll skip that today to keep the video as short as possible. All right, for printing, I like to configure a network printer here at home. But before you can do that with OpenSUSE, uh, you need to go into YAST and configure the firewall because uh, by default, uh, the uh, network interfaces are set to the default zone. And I believe the default zone is the public zone for both the bridge, because this is a KVM hypervisor, and the EMP1S0, which is the ethernet connection, right? If we do an IP-A, or IPA rather, uh, you can see there's a bridge, number three interface, which points to uh, the uh, physical Ethernet card ENP1S0. So um, the default is public, like I just said, and so allowed is only a DHCP version 6 client. And for printing, we need, at the very least, the multicast DNS for detecting a network printer and configuring it properly. Since we're at home, this is a home printer. Uh, the home zone is appropriate, I believe. It includes MDNS and Samba Client, Secure Shell, etc., etc. So that's good for home use. I'm going to switch it, the zone for both interfaces, Bridge or BR0, and also the Ethernet connection, change that to home, select OK. So we should be set for uh, connecting to and configuring a uh, network printer. Good, so that's done. So next, uh, let me find uh, in the YAS Control Center, the printer. There it is, configure printers. So I have, there's no print queue here. so. We have to create a print queue for my home uh, Wi-Fi connected uh, black and white brother laser printer. Very inexpensive and very good printer for what it is. So I'm just gonna, it doesn't detect uh, this printer. I'm just gonna go to uh, connection uh, uh, wizard and I know the IP address for the Internet Printing Protocol uh, URI for my printer. In my case, it's a private network address, 10.1.10.16 slash IPP. And the printer manufacturer, of course, is Brother. Click OK. And let's find and assign a driver. I like to use the Internet Printing Protocol, IPP everywhere. So I search for Internet Printing Protocol, IPP Everywhere. That works very well for many modern printers, maybe for yours as well. I'm in the United States, North America, so the default paper size is letter, not A4. Arbitrary Q name is brother, and we'll use it as default for this system. And that should be it. We click OK. Create the new printer setup, updating configuration files. And here we go. Local configuration. Brother with driver IPP everywhere. Default is yes, status is ready. So we go ahead and print a test page. I'm hearing the printer firing up. It's printing a nice CUPS uh, printout. So it's been successfully configured. Very good. All right, so we have configured our printer and it's working. We verified it. So I'll click OK here. And uh, next, let's go ahead and uh, close the YAS Control Center. Close System Settings. Go back to the console. If I do an LPQ, you can see 
the Brother laser printer is ready, but there are no entries anymore because the test print was successful and gone from the queue. So let's undo this latest configuration change for the printer. Let's remove the printer by rolling back the system. To do that, let's restart. So we're going to get rid of our printer, right? As a demonstration of the system rollback on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Very handy on rolling release. If something goes wrong, you can always roll back the system. Roll forward, roll back. So uh, let's start bootloader from a read-only snapshot. And we're going to look at this list of reverse chronological order snapshots, read-only. And we like to go to a snapshot just before we configured the YAS printer. And I would select for today the uh, post YAST firewall, which is the most recent snapshot pre-printing. So that's snapshot number six. And help shows if, if snapshot number six works, just run snapper rollback and reboot for a system rollback. So that's a nice uh, handy help screen uh, in case you forgot how to roll back the system. It's part of Grub. Very luxurious. All right, so let's boot snapshot number six, which is read only, right? This is just for testing. We can't use it for regular day to day use. We want a system to be read right for that. Okay. So let's go here. Let's do LPQ. Sure enough, there's no printer. So it's like we never ever configured the brother laser printer. So what we want, right? So we want to go back to this state. So let's uh, launch YAST. Let's double check to make sure that there's no printer anymore. Let me go to printing. YAST to printer and you can see we're back to there is no print queue message on our printer configurations. So yes, it appears to me at least that the printer is well and truly gone. So let's roll back the system to this snapshot, number six. Sudo snapper rollback does the trick. And it is classic. So read only snapshot of the default subvolume will be snapshot 11. Read write snapshot of the current subvolume, uh, number six, will be snapshot 12. And we're setting the default subvolume to snapshot 12, which is a read write snapshot of the read only snapshot number six, right? Which is what we're on right now. So if you do a sudo snapper ls, um, you can see all uh, there is a dash there, a hyphen. That's what we booted from, right? Snapshot number six, the read-only snapshot we're on right now. And uh, all the other snapshots are still there, including the printing snapshot. So we can always roll forward if you want the printer back. So snapshot is 11 is rollback backup of number one, which is the default uh, snapshot. And 12 is a plus next to it because that's the new default booting snapshot, a writable copy of snapshot number six, right? Which we're running at the moment. So let's reboot into the read write version of snapshot number six, which is snapshot number 12. If you go to the start bootloader, uh, menu item, uh, you can see that we still have all our snapshots. So let's go ahead and select our freshly rolled back system and we'll log back in. Let's see, as far as I know, only uh, Spiral Linux and OpenSUSE Tumbleweed have these this snapshot system pre-configured out of the box. Okay, LPQ, no default destination available. So indeed, we're running the correct snapshot without any printing configured. Very well. All right, um, next, let's go ahead, minimize console. Let's go back to the system settings and we'll go back to YAST, down to the password, because we need to configure the user groups in order to use um, the uh, kernel virtual machine KVM QEMU system. And in order to do that, we 
to go into user and group management. There's our user Steven. We're the only user on the system. We'll edit. We'll go to the details tab for the existing local user. And a default group is Steven. We'd like to add an additional group, namely libvirt. So we can communicate with libvirt daemon without having to enter the root password all the time. It's a matter of convenience. You don't have to do this. You can always enter the password if you're working with virtual machines, but I find it gets old really quickly. So um, here we go. You should be able to log out and log back in again to have the uh, group uh, membership updated, but I'm just going to re restart instead because it's so fast. Just a little bit slower than logging out and logging back in again. It's a fast machine. All right. So in console, if I type ID, you, you see that the groups equals 1000 Steven, which is the default group, and 108, which is libvirt, which is what we need. So now let's go to the uh, application launcher and uh, look for a virtual machine manager, which is what I'm using right now for this video. And uh, put that in the launch bar, taskbar. Let's launch it. It should just connect to the system instance of KVM QEMU or vice versa. As you can see, we've got the uh, system instance connected. Perfect. Let's go to edit connection details and preferences. Um, I like to enable XML editing and for polling, to, I like to check uh, CPU usage, disk I.O. and network I.O. Very easy. Okay. So um, here you can add in the virtual networks tab, you can add additional networks, uh, NAT, route open isolated, SRIOV pool, lots of choices there. For storage pools, you can add an addition to the default. You can uh, do another file system directory, iSCSI, NetFS, SCSI, ZFS pool. Whatever you, you need and whatever you have, uh, you can configure right here with the Virtual Machine Manager. We're running version 4.1.0, which is the latest as of this video's publication. Good, so virtualization is configured. It's that simple with OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Let's go back to the console and uh, make it a little bigger font and clear the console and let's check the system uh, security audit with Linus. sudo Linus audit system. And we'll hit enter and enter the password for root. Let Linus 3.0.9, which is uh, part of the repositories in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. It's a fairly recent version, good enough for checking just how our system scores, even with the uh, firewall configured for home use which makes it a little less hard. And it looks like the hardening index is 86, and that's very high compared with other distros I've checked. Very, very good, and it's green. Most of the other distros I test are in the yellow. And, uh, but even so, with 86, which is a high score indeed, it has 29 suggestions that you can follow for further hardening. But bravo, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Very, very uh, good results here. 86 is not bad at all. Again, even with the firewall uh, reconfiguration. All right, let's clear the console. And let's sudo zipper dupe to see if there are any updates. Again, I wouldn't use uh, discover for updating. I would use the command line for updating with sudo zipper dupe for best results. And let's just keep uh, discover for flat packs. That would be my recommendation. I have the best experience just doing it that way. You can uh, update using discover, but uh, some people have reported issues long-term with uh, discover and OpenSUSE tumbleweed 
updates. So they recommend the official recommendation is sudo zipper dupe, and that's what I'll stick with. All right, let's go back uh, to system settings and let's go back to about the system. And here we go. Kernel version 6.6.11, I think 6.6.12 or 13 is out by now. If we go to system monitor and processes, or overview rather, um, here's the memory usage, disk usage, and uh, all the uh, things, information we need. So that's basically uh, the end of my uh, demonstration today. Coming from Arch and other distributions, I'm more used to configure the system from the command line and run scripts, but as you can see, it's mostly possible to do system management via clicking the mouse. Yast, yet another system tool I believe, has always been powerful and combined with out-of-the-box bootable ButterFS snapshotting sets OpenSUSE apart from other distributions. Let me know what you think in the comments, subscribe, and smash the like button if you found this tutorial useful. Until next time, take care and have lots of fun.